It's become really hard as of lately to buy any electronics, consumer goods, consume any service on the web that does not tout AI as a magic ingredient, as a differentiator, as a key feature. Now AI, as I first met it, was in books and movies. HAL in 2001 admittedly was not the most friendly of characters, as it turned out. Data from Star Trek, on the other hand, he or it, actually quite likable. AI started earlier than that, though. Um, it has roots in formal logics and mathematics. And so the rules of symbolic artificial intelligence, how we call it, resemble that. Here's a simple example. If something is a bird, we can imply, we can derive that it flies. And indeed, there is this lovely bird, Tweety. Then this little program allows us to inf inference that Tweety flies. The devil's in the detail, though, and as always in life, there is exceptions. Imagine we aren't facing Tweety the bird, but Tux the bird. Tux happens to be a penguin, and penguins are birds. Tux also happens to be the mascot of Linux. But neither that mascot nor Tux nor penguins in general do fly. Still, in this example, we would derive that. So we need to adjust our rules and make it more complex. Essentially saying if something is a bird and we do not know that it does not fly, then we can conclude it flies. And we add the bit of information that Tux doesn't fly or, or penguins don't fly. And no longer derive incorrect conclusions. Problem solved? Yes, that specific one. Problem is, as we model information, as we try to program, this can become hideously complex. Both, you know, the kind of double negation, not, not, and two different kinds of negation, but also having to be explicit about everything, putting all the information in the system, and then how do we draw conclusions? There's an entire field in logics called non-autonomic logic, and there's many, many different logics that have subtle differences. Now, what instead of teaching the machine detail by detail by detail, rule by rule, exception by exception, we could let the machine learn. We could let the machine learn that penguins don't fly, fat penguins fly even less, lame vultures don't fly, but our little friend Tweety flies. Just how do we go about teaching the machine? How do we get to machines that learn? Admittedly, the most complex, the most amazing learning system that we are aware of is us. It's the human central nervous system, which is built of neurons that are tightly connected. So a neural network, a biological neural network. And scientists quickly then came to the conclusion that mirroring, mimicking such biological neural networks with artificial ones might actually give us similar learning and reasoning capabilities. The problem back then Computers weren't fast enough. Computers weren't capable enough. And so the theory was there. Simple toy examples were there, but not a lot of real life usage. That has changed in the last five, 10 years. And there's been different models and increasingly sophisticated models. One that's commonly used these days is so-called deep learning. Why deep learning? As we know, the neurons in the human brain are intricately interconnected. And any computer will have to use a simplified model. But the most simple model where there's input and output 
proved insufficient for more intricate problems. And deep learning addresses that by having an input layer and then a connection, like a sandwich, different layers, and then the desired output. And one use case that I really like about this is not just replacing experts, but supporting experts. Specifically here, Fujitsu, one of our partners and medical researchers based on some of SUSE infrastructure technologies actually developed a system that flags aneurysms. Aneurysms are sacs in human arteries that we often have from birth that don't cause problems unless and until they do. And when one of those aneurysms in the brain ruptures, your chance of survival are 60%. 40% of people die. And of those 60% that make it, the maturity has severe limitations, severe consequences for the rest of your life. So flagging aneurysms proactively for risk groups, but also when there is an incidence that might be due to an aneurysm, detecting aneurysms really quickly so that then treatment can, can begin quickly, which is a, makes a big difference, is key. And those researchers use deep learning and neural networks to propose potential aneurysms to the medical doctor, then with their expertise, could say yeah, nay, and initiate proper treatment. How do we actually teach such systems? How do they learn? One way is really similar to how we learn in school. How you and me probably learn the alphabet or kanji, Chinese, and, and other characters. By the teacher showing us a sample and labeling it and saying, this is an A, this is a B. Drawing a slight variation, this is an A, this is a B. And then the system, or in, in our case, our students, have integrated that knowledge and could use it. Another way which creates order from chaos is super unsupervised learning. Essentially, we take a soup of data. Alphabet soup is actually something I got as a child where you have like those little noodles that are shaped after the different letters. And then have the system go in and try to identify similarities, create partitions and clusters. And as you can see, in the case of A's and A's, uppercase, lowercase, and B's and C's, that actually can work very well. Note, though, that in case of C's, our system here didn't actually differentiate between uppercase and lowercase C's. Why that? Because they look the same. If you look at the features, an uppercase B and a lowercase B look differently. One has two lobes, the other one has one loop. C's look rather similarly. And that is one of the strengths, but also points where we need to be cautious when we let systems loose is they may surprise us, which is good. There's good surprises. We learn something new. And sometimes there is undesired surprises where something that we thought was really clear actually isn't, at least to the system in training. A third approach commonly used in machine learning is reinforcement learning. There, instead of training the system in a more complete manner, we give some basic information, we give some um, basic guidelines, basic information about the problem domain, and then let the system run. And as the system runs, in simulation or out in the wild, hopefully in case of cars on a, on a test track and not on, on actual roads, the system receives from humans or automatic feedback. That was a good choice. 
that was a good choice. That was a bad choice, good choice. And that allows it to adjust and learn and become better. And if that sounds like how you or me would learn to play tennis or golf or do many, if not most human activities, that's right. Reinforcement learning mimics this constant iteration, our lifelong learning process. As you have seen in all those examples, <laughs> letters and taking a step back, computer vision is another key discipline of artificial intelligence. Use cases include the aneurysm detection that we have seen, include <clears throat> self-driving cars, where it definitely makes a difference whether that object there is a car that's moving fast towards you or ahead of, or away from you, whether it's a pedestrian, um, it's a block of concrete, it's a traffic sign, and if it's a traf traffic sign, what does the traffic sign say? Neural networks have found their way into that domain, but also other approaches that are more feature-based. As you can see with this letter, there are certain attributes. There's a curve here. There is like two connected uh, loops. There is certain features. And then combining different methodologies is actually what leads to best results. As humans have different senses. Vision is one, speaking and listening is one. And so it's very natural, no pun intended, for natural language processing to be another dimension of artificial intelligence. Both in generating natural language from text, think of people that are handicapped or that need to focus somewhere, and still get input. If you ever had a rental car in a foreign city, maybe you had a navigation system and preferably you didn't look down on the screen, but listen to the guidance that hopefully made sense. And in the other direction, we may wish to talk with systems because we have our hands full. You're a surgeon that has both hands in the thorax of the patient. You don't want to pull out one hand and then start operating a touchscreen, you maybe want to talk with the system. And last but not least in, in our list here, one of the most complex, but also most rewarding disciplines of AI is planning. And there's all sorts of planning. There's obviously financial planning, there is planning your next vacation. What we are looking here is something that's tractable, as we call it, for computers. And one way where we have been involve, evolving technologies and learn more about learning itself is playing games. One of the most widely known games across all countries is chess. And it's now more than 20 years ago that IBM Steve Plue was the first computer to regularly beat the best human players. And the way IBM Deep Blue learned or was taught was by experts. It was literally a room full of really good chess player, experts in chess, experts in programming. Uh, there were lots of books all fed into the system using heuristics, learning by heart <laughs> or by chips in that case, I guess, different moves, different strategies, how a certain position has been addressed in the past. And that created the job. It was a lot of effort, but ultimately the blue won. Fast forward 20 years and our approach of learning games or having computers learn games and other things has changed. DeepMind and specifically AlphaZero is now regularly beating all humans when it comes to chess, but strikingly more complex games, 
even though they look very simple, like Go. And Alpha Series approach is completely different. Rather than having experts spoon feed information, their own skills, and lots and lots of data and historical um, evidence, Alpha Zero only gets basic rules. What are the pieces? How can the pieces move on the board? When this piece hits another piece of a different color, what happens, etc. And then you create two instances of Alpha Zero, or really a flood of instances, and let the system play against itself and learn and learn. Feedback is you won, you lost, you got into troubles, etc. And that was then the first system that bet the best goal players in the world. Now what's fascinating about that, the learning in this case, and admittedly computers have become faster, but still, the learning in this case has been taking 24 hours, 48 hours, not longer. And in case what I just described sounded familiar and struck a chord in your memory, you're right. Reinforcement learning is the technology that's been used here. So we have seen artificial intelligence is a rich field. It's machine learning, there's different kinds of learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning, there is computer vision, natural language processing, planning, and of course still the classic, how do I represent knowledge? How do I reason about that represented knowledge? And as I said, many other fields. One aspect that I haven't actually covered really a lot yet, that however goes hand in hand with artificial intelligence, reflects itself in the name of an organization all of you probably have heard of. It's the Central Intelligence Agency. And that's not just because the people there presumably are intelligent, but intelligent in the English language also refers to information, knowledge, and ultimately data. And that is one of the key pillars that organizations like the CIA actually use, is data. Gathering data, compiling data, processing data. And some of the data obviously is classified, um, and most of us never will get to see it. But interesting um, aspect here, the CIA actually publishes relevant data about countries and other aspects of our planet. With data, however, and processing data and gathering data, comes new complexity. Our inferencing, our learning, whatever we do, is only as good as our data, which is why getting data is such a priority for CA, but in fact, any business, any of us ever buying a car, a house, um, planning, planning a holiday. The problem here is bias. If we train, say, a facial recognition system with images of middle aged male Caucasians, how good do you think that system will fare when it's encountering female Klingons, female Vulcans, or babies, or seniors. And when we process data, obviously, there has been an increased sensitive, and rightfully so, around data protection. There's regulations like the GDPR about storing data, how you can acquire data, how you need to communicate with people whose data you have. And so it's not just an ethical question or ethical questions we're looking here. There is a huge domain of legal questions, one of which is liability. If I drive a car and I wrap my car around a tree, unless the tree just fell from the sky, 
it's probably my fault and it's probably rather easy to identify whose fault it was. If I'm sitting in the car reading a newspaper taking a snooze and it's a self-driving car, who is liable? So there is quite some questions around that bias, data protection, liability and a number of other legal and ethical questions. Putting it all together, I think it's become clear that data is absolutely key as the foundation of our artificial intelligence infrastructure. But we also need actual infrastructure. We need a place to store all the data. We need to be able to move, to communicate, networking. And we need processing, usually an awful amount of processing power to run our advanced algorithms that we have in AI. Some of which come from the family of machine learning and then more specifically deep learning. But as we've seen, AI is much richer than that. And wrapping around that, considerations that we absolutely must not forget are ethical questions and legal questions. Like any technology, AI is not a panacea. It is and can be a very useful tool to improve business, to improve our lives and save our lives though. Thank you. Thank you.